Welcome everybody, this is Alan with Daily Armor of God. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all doing well. This is our reading the New Testament 6-6 six, six day reading plan. We're on day 6 and today we'll be reading Matthew 19 through 21. So, let's get started in Matthew chapter 19 and verse 1. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these sayings, he departed from Galilee and came into the coast of Judea beyond Jordan. And great multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? He answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female, and said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh? Wherefore they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. So these verses uh, we see here, which you, you could do a Bible study on this about marriage and all that, and would be a very interesting Bible study. I was thinking about doing that someday. Uh, but if you look at the context of these verses, <clears throat> in God's eyes, and then there's other verses to support this, but in God's eyes, when a man and woman come together in our one flesh, that to God is marriage. You know, um, fornication, the word fornication, that's like sleeping around with many different people. But the way God planned it from the beginning was one and one become one flesh and uh that is uh part of marriage you're devoting yourself to the other person when you come together and um what does he say he says um let not man put asunder so same with divorce and this is um another topic of discussion but i'll quickly say um and the bible doesn't say every situation and i'm sure there's situations that god um would understand if you did have to get do a, a divorce but uh in terms of bible what the bible states it says no divorce unless a fornication of adultery uh by the other person um you know that and even then it's if you can't work things out uh god would still like to work things out but that's what it's saying here um we're living in a world where you know easy divorce easy this easy that and and to the point where marriage and divorce they just mean nothing marriage not going to get into a big discussion about that, but there's so many factors why uh, marriage is being destroyed and the sanctity of marriage. Um, and I absolutely hate it. You're making a commitment. Don't make a commitment or vow lightly. Even the Bible says don't make vows lightly. Don't make vows you can't keep. Don't make promises you can't keep. And God regards vows Right? You're not just making vows to the other person. You're making vows to God as well. So, anyway, that's all I'll say about this subject because I could go on uh, and it, it could be its own Bible study. So, what God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. They say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away? He saith unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, suffered you to put away your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. And I say unto you, Whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication. So this is the word I was talking about, which gets uh, mixed up by a lot of uh, preachers and churches and people. Fornication is sex outside of marriage. That's it. So if you are married... It's not called fornication when you come together with your spouse, with your husband, or with your wife. Um, right? It's not. But I've heard throughout my life 
preachers say that even with your own spouse, it's fornication and you shouldn't, you should avoid it completely, which is totally not biblical. Um, this is another Bible study you could do. <clears throat> God encourages marriage and everything that in, that entails. Um, but, you know, this word here, fornication, just gets muddied by people who don't read or uh, read the context and think that all fornication is bad, even within marriage. But, well, marriage is not fornication. So you see how this could lead people astray into some weird ideas? Fornication is sex outside of marriage. That's it. So if you are married, it's not called fornication if you're doing it with your uh, husband or wife that is if you're doing it with uh, someone else that's adultery and fornication so i uh, just wanted to make that clear because it's so wrong when people say that even within marriage it's wrong to show your love in it, that intimate way uh w with your spouse no it's not it's encouraging and we'll we'll see that uh coming up here so um What's discouraged is this word fornication, and that, again, is sex with people who are not uh, your husband or wife, whom you are not married to. That is that is a bad thing. It really is a bad thing, because here's another thing, uh, another um, subject matter. You're giving a piece of yourself away every time uh, with multiple people. So that's why... Uh, the Bible says you know, only give it that to your spouse, to one another. And there's many different reasons why I'm not going to get into that, but, right? All right, just wanted to, to clarify that a little bit. Um, fornication is bad. Within marriage, there's nothing bad about um, showing your love to your spouse. And it's not called fornication in that sense. So... Um, whosoever shall put away his wife, except to be for fornication, this is implying adultery, and shall marry another, committeth adultery, and whoso marrieth her which is put away, doth commit adultery. Uh, and another little bit of context is if you read the Old Testament, you see that they were divorcing their spouses, men were divorcing their, their wives, because they want, they either got tired of them, they wanted something different. That is wrong. That's basically, you're just playing a game at that point. Adultery. Um, that's what it's talking about here. Um, you shouldn't divorce for, for something like that. For basically no meaning. Um, and or for no reason. And what do we have to, in today's world? Divorce, easy divorce. Uh, for any reason whatsoever. It doesn't have to be any reason actually uh but uh christ here is saying except to be for fornication implying adultery uh don't put away your wife put away means divorce so continuing on his disciples saying to him if the case of the man be so with his wife it is not good to marry but he said unto them all men cannot receive this saying save they to whom it is given for there are some eunuchs which were so born from their mother's womb and there are some eunuchs which are made eunuchs of men and there be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake he that is able to receive it let him receive it then were there brought unto him little children that he should put his hands on them and pray and the disciples rebuked them but jesus said suffer little children and forbid them not to come unto me for of such is the kingdom of heaven and he laid his hands on them and departed thence. And behold, one came unto him and said, uh, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He saith unto him, Which? Jesus saith, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man saith unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. 
But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were exceeding amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. I love that verse. All things are, are possible with God. He is God Almighty. He could do anything and everything. Then answered Peter and said to him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you that ye which have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And every one that hath forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. But many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Matthew 20 For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour, and saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right I will give you. And they went their way. Again he went out about the sixth and ninth hour, and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour he went out, and found others standing idle, and saith unto them, Why stand ye here all day idle? They say unto him, Because no man hath hired us, he saith unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. So when even was come, the lord of the vineyard saith unto his steward, Call the laborers, and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. And when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. But when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more, and they likewise received every man a penny. And when they had received it, they murmured against the good man of the house, saying, These last have wrought but one hour, and thou hast made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden of the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst not thou agree with me for a penny? Take that thine is, and go thy way. I will give unto this last, even as unto thee. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Is thine eye evil, because I am good? So the last shall be first, and the first last. For many be called, but few chosen. And Jesus, going up to Jerusalem, took the twelve disciples apart in the way, and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be betrayed into, unto the chief priests and the, unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death. And shall deliver him to the Gentiles, to mock, and to scourge, and to crucify him. And the third day he shall rise again. <clears throat> then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, worshipping him, and desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, What wilt thou? She saith unto him, Grant that these my two sons may sit, the one on thy right hand, and the other on the left, in, the, in thy kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, Ye know not what ye ask. Are ye able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They say unto him, We are able. And he saith unto them, Ye shall drink indeed of my cup, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my father. And when the ten heard it, they were moved with indignation against the two brethren, but Jesus called them unto him, and said, Ye know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them. But it shall not be so among you. But whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. And as they departed from Jericho, a great multitude followed him. And behold, two men two blind men sitting by the wayside, when they heard that Jesus passed by, cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And the multitude rebuked them, because they should hold their peace. But they cried the more, saying, 
have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And Jesus stood still and called them and said, What will ye that I shall do unto you? They say unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. So Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received sight, and they followed him. Amen to that, immediately. Matthew 21. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem, and were come to Bethpage, unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway you shall find an ass tied in a colt with her. Loose them, and bring them unto me. If any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. All this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Sion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek, and sitting upon an ass, and a colt the fowl of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt, and put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way, others cut down branches from trees and strawed them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. <clears throat> and Jesus went into the temple of God, and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple, and overthrew the tables of the money changers, and the seats of them that sold doves, and said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer. But ye have made it a den of thieves. Yep, Christ in this moment had righteous indignation, righteous anger, righteous fury, and rightly so. They were, they turned the temple into a marketplace, literally, buying, selling, trading. It was, it's, they corrupted it. They corrupted the temple. It's sickening. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. And when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were sore displeased, and said unto him, Hearest thou what these say? And Jesus saith unto them, Yea, have ye never read? Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise. And he left them and went out of the city into Bethany, and he lodged there. Now in the morning as he returned into the city, he hungered. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it, and found nothing thereon but leaves only, and said unto it, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforward forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon is the fig tree withered away? Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith, and doubt not, Ye shall not only do this which was done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. In all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. Oh, this is great. This is good stuff for a prayer Bible study, which I want to do sometime. Faith and doubt not. Isn't it uh, sometimes hard to not doubt? You could say you have faith. Oh, I, I believe in Christ and I, and I have faith that he's guiding me. But there could still be a part of you that doubts, right? Just like that father who brought his son who was a lunatic, who had the devil, uh, a devil inside of him. Um, he's, he's like, Lord, help my unbelief. He's like, Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. That, that part of us, that human part of us, that doubts and wants to do things our way but you know, so so many times in scripture the bible says you know trust in god have faith in god right proverbs 3 5 trust in the lord with all thine heart with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding so have faith doubt not in this part here in all things whatever you ask in prayer whatsoever you shall ask in prayer believing ye shall receive right it's all about faith without doubting. Continuing on, and when he was coming to the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching and said, 
By what authority doest thou these things, and who gave thee this authority? And Jesus answered and said unto them, I also will ask you one thing, which, if ye tell me, I, and likewise, will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, whence was it, from heaven or of men? And they reasoned with themselves, saying, If we shall say from heaven, he will say unto us, Why did ye not then believe him? But if we shall say of men, we fear the people, for all hold John as a prophet. And they answered Jesus and said, We cannot tell. And he said unto them, Neither tell I you by what authority I do these things. But what think ye? A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward he repented and went. And he came to the second and said likewise, and he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Whether of them twain did the will of his father? They say unto him, The first. Jesus saith unto them, Verily I say unto you that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and ye believed him not. But the publicans and the harlots believed him. And ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterward, that ye might believe him. Hear another parable. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard, and hedged it round about, and digged a wine press in it, and built a tower, and let it out to husbandmen, and went into a far country. When the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the husbandmen, that they might receive of the fruits of it. And the husbandman took his servants, and beat one, and killed another, and stoned another. Again he sent other servants more than the first, and they did unto them likewise. But last of all he sent unto them his son, saying, They will reverence my son. But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and let us seize on his inheritance. And they caught him, and cast him out of the vineyard, and slew him. When the Lord therefore the vineyard cometh, what will he do unto those husbandmen? They say unto him, He will miserably destroy those wicked men, and let it out his vineyard unto other husbandmen, which shall render him the fruits in their seasons. Jesus saith unto them, Did ye never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected, the same as become the head of the corner? This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore I say unto you, The kingdom of God shall be taken from you, and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. When the chief priests and Pharisees had heard the, his parables, they perceived that he spake of them. But when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitude, because they took him for a prophet. Yep, so many great verses in today's reading, <clears throat> so many good ones, um, a variety of verses, right, talking about faith, right, faith, faith without doubting, we need to, uh, we need to remember that because it's easy to forget sometimes in life, but faith without doubting. So that's going to be it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Hope you guys have a great evening, morning, noon, wherever you're at. Remember to put God first in everything you do. Have faith in Him, trust in Him, wait upon Him, and you'll never be sorry. God willing, we'll see you tomorrow with more Bible reading. So, thanks again, take care, and God bless.